understand you've been geocaching for a while. Uh, since April of 2001. Well, you've probably found a few caches along the way. Uh, California to New York to Key West and beyond. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fun sport to get out and explore a town. Yep, yep. It, it's a great opportunity to get out, meet people like doing the same type of thing, but just to be out of doors, even if it's snowing and, and I, at least it's not too cold out. Not yeah. too bad, it's great. And, and it's a great way to go to a new town and take the geocaching tour of a town. It's yep. better than having a guide with you. Yep. I've always found it's real nice because you get to find out the history, the natural environment, because yep. that's where most people hide their caches. Yep. Good reason yep. to get outside. Yep. And it takes you to places you never knew existed. How many have you found today? Uh, we found five today. You're doing really good. And you guys? Uh, I've cached here before, so I'm just getting the scragglers I have, and I've only gotten two caches. Yep. Okay. Now, in, in, in Mitchell, they've got three dozen of them scattered all around town so it's a hot spot we found, uh, we found a lot of those with our boys did you yeah. Yeah. i think i got like five left to do in mitchell yeah. That, yeah. i wasn't here last year so mitchell those are Orleans. Ones to do. all right well good luck and hope you find the rest of them okay Thanks. that is one big tree and according to my gps we're here at uh this be cache number two and there we go All right. Well, according to uh, the cache number two secret code, this is a giant tulip poplar. And uh, it's probably the biggest one I've ever seen. We're uh, here in, in uh, this cache happens to be in the Donaldson Woods section of Spring Mill State Park. Uh, basically virgin timber, never been harvested. Uh, this truly is a big tree. Now our secret code here, uh, tulip poplar was named for the state tree in 1931. There's some of our code numbers. Looks like we've got uh, estimated 350 to 450 years of age, 400 year tree, looks like a 20 year old tree, 2010, 267, 118 feet. There's a lot of code numbers in here uh, for our uh, code uh, for this tree. So we'll have to figure that out when we get back to the lodge. Let's move on and find another one, shall we? Okay, there we go. Let's head off this way. If you don't have your own GPS global positioning satellite handheld unit, don't worry, you can still try geocaching. If you're in the Spring Mill State Park area, stop in in the town of Mitchell. The Lawrence County Tourism Bureau has a visitor center and they have handheld GPS devices that you can check out for the day. They've also got over three dozen geocaches hidden in and around the town and the area. So you can come on down, try it out for a day, but I'll warn you right now, you're liable to get hooked on geocaching. It's a great way to get out and experience anything from a snowy day in February to a hot, sweaty day in July. It's great for your family and friends. Uh, it's a great opportunity to get out into the woods, and it's just a good time all around. Lawrence County is an unexpected destination found in the heart of southern Indiana rolling hills, offering recreational landscapes, a rich limestone heritage, and unique outdoor experiences. This area is limestone country, well known for limestone quarries and stone carving heritage. It's also the home of Spring Mill State Park, geocaches, the scenic East Fork of the White River, and underground caverns. Plan your adventure at limestonecountry.com or call 800-798-0769. Hillbilly Custom Game Calls, offering the finest and precision-made diaphragm mouth calls for wild turkey hunting. Each call is handmade and gauge-stretched for exact tension each and every time. Select from double and triple read calls like you've never heard before. We also have an assortment of handmade wood box calls, glass and slate top pot calls, and predator calls, They'll make us your source for all of your custom game call needs. Look for us online at www.hillbillygamecalls.com. Follow Indiana Outdoor Adventures online with Facebook, Twitter, and our website. Stay up to date with our exciting adventures as we're out in the field filming and meeting new people. From news updates and announcements to Twitter posts by co-host Troy McCormick. Why wait until the next season of shows when you can follow us as we're filming them? Join us online to get the most current news on Indiana Outdoor Adventures. 
Welcome back. Mac and I thought we'd take you on a little uh, uh, excursion that we went on back in December and January. We went out and did a little spotlighting for deer. You know, it's a great uh, opportunity to get out in the, uh, out in the woods, uh, pre-season scouting, post-season scouting. And there's just something magical about being out in the dark uh, when the deer are out and moving, don't you think? Oh, yeah. I think it's great. Uh, you know, your families usually are... Uh packing in for the night and Troy and I said you know what this is a great night let's go out and try to look up and see if we can't find some deer. We had a piece of property that's a private property and they don't allow any hunting mm -hmm. and if you're going to go out and look for deer obviously it's kind of nice to go out and check where you're going to be hunting especially post season like we were doing to see who made it through the, uh, the hunting <laughs> season and what might be there uh, for the next coming year but this was even kind of more fun because we went out a night there was an ice storm coming in and anytime there's a storm front, there's a good chance that deer are going to be moving more. And we knew that this place, no hunting allowed. Yeah. Just wanted to find out what was there. And uh, we sure did. We did. We, uh, we've seen, we saw an awful lot of deer and uh, some big bucks. We did. You know, I was amazed really at the number of deer. Uh, not only the number of bucks, but just deer in general. And, and you'll see here in the video, there's, there's a lot of snow coming down. It, got, it started out sleet. It started out cold. But there's something about that front coming in that really gets those deer moving. Yeah, they were up and moving. And the ones that weren't, once they once that storm started, they kind of bedded down. Yeah. And then we would uh, see a snow-covered back of a deer. You know, it was pretty awesome. That's how fast the snow was coming down. You know, let, let's talk just for a second about the, the fact that we're out there with lights. Mm -hmm. We're out uh, shining spotlights out the window of a car. And, and there's times when that's illegal to do. Yeah, yeah. You have to, uh, number one, you can't have a firearm or, or bow. No or guns, no, no weapons, weapons of any kind. Of any kind. Uh, when you're out shining, you want to make sure that uh, <clears throat> even if you got that something laying underneath the seat that you forgot about, an old 22 or something, you want to make sure you don't have that. Um, <clears throat> and we also want to make sure that, you know, have courtesy. Don't right. be shining in people's houses and uh, lighting them up or cattle or horses. That upsets a farmer. And uh, as of right now, it's legal to shine. So, but you just want to be more courteous. Now Sometimes that, we don't. That's legal in Indiana. In some states, Correct. don't allow it at all. You go to Colorado, I believe it's a uh, you, no way. Yeah. You know, so there are states. You got to check the states that you uh, that you're headed to. Now, as far as equipment goes, uh, we were out filming. Of course, we wanted a little bit brighter lights, but having a bright light's a good thing unless you're shining it in someone's window. Yeah. Uh, you can do it with flashlights, but a Q-beam light really is so much better to use. Uh, and, and one of our times that we went out, we tried something different. Yeah, I went and uh, <clears throat> bought one of these newer uh, uh, shot, LED. Newer, or LED light. Yes, I brought that, bought that and took it out. It really pumped up thinking that we were going to light up the whole wood. That's right. It was like, uh, what was it, two, one or two million? Oh, it was so, like, yeah, I, yeah. I, it was a different kind of a rating than candle power that we're Correct. used to. Correct, yeah. Uh, and we were just psyched because we had this new LED light, but newer is not always better. No, we, we, we broke down and got our, the old one out that's about 20 years old, and it worked a lot better, worked better with the camera. You know, and, the, the uh, I will say the light was a, from the LED, it was a, a bluer, clearer light, but it just wasn't as bright. Now, there may be other uh, LEDs on the market that we've not tried yet yeah. that are nice and bright. But there's just something about the old Q-beam, God, how many candle power, yeah. hundreds of millions of candle power type of thing. <laughs> but it, it lit the night up. And obviously we were filming, so more light is better. That's right. And uh, I think you can you can see the difference. We, we actually abandoned the uh, newer light for the old light and stuck with it. And uh, <clears throat> where I could hang outside and Troy could do the filming, so it, it was it was pretty good. Yeah, here's a little film tip uh, for you too. We started out filming uh, in just an aperture priority mode. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I switched over, and uh, uh, because the aperture priority, it just normally you know if you open your aperture up, it's going to let more light in. But it's mm -hmm. dark out. <laughs> yeah. There's not a lot of natural light, and the further away from the vehicle that we were, the light got less and less. There's a great mode on a lot of cameras. Uh, that's called the spotlight mode. Yeah. And spotlight mode is really intended for maybe you're at the theater, your your daughter's in a recital, your son's in a play, and the idea is that your your camera is averaging the light reading in, in the, the whole viewfinder. Well, if you've got a spotlight on the stage and you've got a lot of darkness around it, it's going to bring in a lot brighter uh, 
light. Well, it works out really well for filming uh, at night, uh, shining. You might be shining for, for coon. Right. You might be out uh, uh, shining, uh, spotlighting for deer. Which we plan on going coon hunting, right. so we, I, I'm kind of glad that we learned that. You can tell Troy is into that, and knowing that, I, I'd ask him, is it nice looking? He says, yes, and I say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how we handled that. Uh, but once you went back and got it up and look, it was a big difference, wasn't it? It was. It really was. <clears throat> we, tell them about the, we're out, we're out driving around, and we just happened to see up in the trees. Now, we're out, we're out shining for deer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we saw up in the, now it's dark. I mean, you know, it's nighttime. It's pitch black. But skylighted, uh, what little, you know, that kind of bluish black kind of light of the night sky to wasn't much brightness out there because of the storm that was coming in, mm -hmm. but we saw these little specks. I think that was the second night we went out. Second night, there's a certain spot in the road uh, <clears throat> on this property that I knew that they like turkeys like to roost, and so um, <clears throat> it was pretty neat. We got there and I said, "Hey Troy, get ready. Uh, we might be in an area." And then we start seeing the black dots. We tried to shine them, and it was uh, <laughs> oh, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were like, they just sitting there and you couldn't see anything. So we turned the light off, sat there in the dark and, and recorded it. And it was great because oh. there were dozens and dozens of turkeys that were in this roost. And you could kind of see them with the naked eye, but the camera was just not picking it up. I got some great audio recording. In fact, mm -hmm. let's, you know, we'll, we'll listen to a little bit of that. But what we found out was, I, I thought, okay, well, we'll try that spotlight mode. Well, the spotlight didn't work because... All I did was illuminate the branches in the foreground, and the turkeys were you know, roosting further than that. Uh, so I switched to the aperture priority mode, and that didn't really get anything because there wasn't enough natural light. Mm -hmm. But what, I found a new setting on the camera. <laughs> it was so funny. You think you know everything about your equipment. <laughs> and I'm clicking down, and I'm one click past spotlight, and what I found was night mode. I had never had the opportunity to use night mode before. And... Uh, I don't know why you would use night mode, <laughs> unless you're out shining for turkeys. <laughs> That's right. What we found out was I went one click too far, and my viewfinder just lit up. And if you, you know, you've seen on TV shows where they put the night vision goggles on, yep. and the world kind of gets brighter and it's green. Well, this didn't turn green; it turned pinkish orange. Yeah. But you could see the turkeys up in the tree, and it was just amazing uh, that that setting on the camera. It took the very faintest of light. Yeah, and, faint. Oh, it was, I mean, it's dark. It's the middle yeah, of the night. Unbelievable. But it lit it up so we could see those birds. And you could see them moving around on the branches and stretching their wings. And they weren't happy that we were there. So they no. were more than normal. Yeah, we kind of, uh, we kind of, we didn't bump them. No. Nope. You know, we didn't bump them off the roost. But they were rearranging yeah. from roost to roost. And then you would see them catching their balance and their tail feathers. And, and it was pretty neat. And then went through the camera, which I guess they'll be able to see. Right. Uh, you'll get to see what we saw that night. And we had talked about it earlier that, wow, you know, people that don't get this opportunity to go out, you know, like Troy and I and a lot of other people, uh, they really don't know what they're missing. And usually when you film it, it's just not the quality of real Mother Nature. But we're getting pretty close. High definition makes a big difference. Yeah, we're getting real close. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's go take a look at uh, some more of the footage. We've been kind of showing a little bit of it, but let's go take a look at some of that. That'd be great. And I've got to tell you, we really had a good time. Uh, as you've seen, we saw a lot of, of animals those two nights. It's great. And I tell you what, um, we want to make sure that we stress that you've got to be careful when you're doing this. Right. You, 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 you have to uh, be courteous and you have to follow the law. And we definitely want that. 
Uh, we felt like this was a different format that, that Troy and I have uh, brought to you, and we hope you like it. Uh, we, we're excited, as you can tell, to always talk about the adventures that uh, we get to go on. And uh, we hope we have many, many more to show you people, and uh, we appreciate you watching the show. Join us again next week as we go on another adventure right here on Indiana Outdoor Adventures.